Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be fixing this Epson printer. Okay then guys, so welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at this printer and the backstory is that the customer says a big error appears the moment they try and turn it on and they can't get rid of the error. None of the inputs work for backing out of the error or going back to any menus or anything. And ultimately it's just saying to contact Epson and yeah, unless you do that, you can't continue to use it. Now they have sent me a photo of the error, so I do know exactly what this problem is and it will happen to all of the printers of this model and some others as well. So I've hooked it up to power and I'll just turn it on so that you can see what we get when we do that. So if I just press this button here. So it's making a load of noise. And basically, as you can see there, it says a printer's ink pad is at the end of its service life. Please contact Epson support. So what actually happens with these printers is there isn't a way for the waste ink pad to communicate back to the firmware to let it know that the ink pad is exhausted and it needs replacing. So what they do instead is they build into the firmware a predetermined number of printable pages before this error will actually appear. And what that means is, is even if you were to just go ahead and replace the ink pad with one of these that I have here, you would end up with the same exact error and you still wouldn't be able to proceed. So what you have to do is you have to replace the ink pad and you also have to go ahead and reset the number of pages printed in the firmware so that it will get rid of the error and will continue as if it were brand new again. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to move the camera to a better position so that we can take a look at dismantling this down to the point where we need to get to in order to get this ink pad replaced. Okay then, so now we've got a better view of the printer itself. We can make a start on dismantling it so that we can replace this waste ink pad. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to lift the top lid up here so that you get access to where you replace the ink. So we just lift that up like that. As you can see, we've got the inks and everything in there. The first two screws that we need to remove are this one and this one. So if I just go ahead and remove those. So once you've removed those two screws, you should just be able to lift this trim off here. So if I just go ahead and do that. There we go, it's well clipped in. As you can see, it just pops off and that's that. So we just put that to one side. Now we just wanna take this screw on the right here out as well. So we'll just do that. And now the next one, you're not gonna be able to see on the camera, but it is actually down in this hole here. It is easy to see once you know it's there. So I'll just remove that one. And there we go, there's that one. Now, once you've actually removed those screws, you should be able to lift this piece of plastic here and this front piece should come off. So if I just go ahead and lift it, it is a little bit tight, but it should come over just fine. There we go, just like that. And then you should find it should have just come off like so. As you can see, we just have the piece there. So we can put that to one side as well. Now the next screw is just at the front here. So we just remove that. And then the final one, you just wanna lift this piece down there like that. And as you can see, there is a screw just there. So we just take that out. Perfect, and now we should just be able to take that piece off like so. Now you might be asking, why have we needed to do all this? And the reason is, is because of this particular screw here which is actually holding the ink pad underneath here in. We just need to remove this screw now, so I'll do that. Now, the final screw is on the bottom here, as you can see there, and we just need to remove that, so I'll just remove this. Okay, so now we've removed all screws and this ink pad should come out. All we need to be wary of is there are two retaining clips there, as you can see, and they hook into this surface here. So you just wanna put some pressure on it like that, and get a purchase on this and just pull it out this way. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. And there we go. 
So as you can see, it is completely black in there. Um, it's supposed to be, if I just bring over the other one, it's supposed to be completely white. And obviously with it being totally black, definitely is ready for a replacement. So it's gonna be the same in reverse. We'll just take the plastic off of this. Do you need to make sure there is a gap there, same as the original one. And that's because there is actually a nozzle that the waste ink comes through on and it has to be able to drop in the hole there. So once you're happy, we'll just go back over to the printer and drop it in. It should just clip back in the same way. There we go. Perfect. Don't worry if there's a little bit of movement in there because we are going to be screwing it back in and it should be nice and firm once we're done. So put the screw back in the bottom and on this one, it is actually the shortest screw out of the lot in case you are confused which screw it is. So if we just put it back in, so that's that one. And then if you remember, we just have a screw here at the top again. So if we just put that one back in. And now that we've put those two screws in, it is completely solid, firm, isn't going anywhere. So we just want to return this piece next. So if we just drop that on the front there, like so. And again, we have two screws and this one is a black screw. And the one above it on the right there is a silver screw. So with the printer back the right way up, we just need to get this piece back on. So we just want to hook it in at the bottom. Just make sure it's nestled in nicely there. And then while holding it in at the bottom, you just want to push it over the top like that and it should go in nice and firmly. And as you remember, there is a hard to see hole down there. So we just need to put a screw into that one and I'm going to go with a silver one as well. Then another screw here at the top, which is another silver one. Finally, we just need to put this trim back in. So if I just drop it over the top there, make sure it's clipped down like so. And now you should just have two black screws left and they just need to go in the top here. And at that, the first part is all done and dusted. Okay then guys, the next step is to turn the printer back on and to actually plug it into your computer. And once you've done that, you need to download this utility here called the WIC Reset Utility. And providing the printer is plugged in and powered on, you should see it populate there in the corner, as you can see, Epson XP760. So what we'll do first is we'll just go over here to where it says read waste counters. And as you can see, you get a pop up there and straight away, it says there counter 101.47%. This counter has reached its limit and needs to be reset. So it's pretty much confirmed that the waste counter needs to be reset. And this is the program that we're going to be using to do it. So what you're going to need to do is go over to here where it says reset waste counters. And when we click this, you are unfortunately going to get a little text box like this that says enter reset key here. Now, unfortunately, it does mean you have to go and buy a one time key. And if you just go ahead here and click buy keys, it will open up the web browser and take you to a page where you can actually buy the keys for this. Obviously it is American US dollars, but they do just send the key via email. So you don't have to wait for it to be posted or pay anything additional other than what you see here. And so obviously I have bought a single key and depending on how many printers you've got or how many you want to do it for, you can buy multiple keys there. But most of you are just going to go ahead and buy that key. And I think it's about £7.80 or something here in the UK. So not overly expensive, but it's the price you have to pay to actually get your printer working again, unfortunately. So I've actually already purchased a key and I've got it here. So if I just go ahead and copy that and just paste it here in the reset utility, I should be able to go ahead and press OK. And it's resetting the waste counters. And as you can see there, it says in order to apply all changes made to the printer, you need to turn it off immediately using the printer power button. A successful reset will not complete until the printer has been powered off and on again. Failure to reset the printer now may result in all counter states returning to their previous settings. Please turn it off now. So if we go ahead and turn it off, I'll just wait for that to power down. And now that we've done that, as you can see on the screen, it says, congratulations, your printer's waste counters have now been reset. 
Once your printer has been shut down, you can then turn it back on and continue to use the printer as normal. Please remember to replace the waste ink pads or fit an external waste ink tank. So let's power it back on and we should see Okay, so I've powered it back on and now we've got a paper jam. Right, so I'm just gonna go and have to sort this paper jam out, so bear with me one second. Okay, and as you can see now, it's all singing and dancing. So I can go ahead and select things on the screen. Everything seems to be working okay. We've got the output tray coming out to me now. And as you can see, it's going ahead and doing its little startup sequence. So yeah, I can safely say that that is now repaired and fixed. So I'll be doing a few tests on it before I actually return it to the customer. But as far as I'm concerned, this is all good now. So I hope you've enjoyed the video guys and I hope this has helped some of you out there as well. And I'll catch you all in the next one.